For centuries, the oceans have been used as a dumping ground for waste. Since the 1960s, post-consumer plastic products have become the most common and persistent pollutants in the world's oceans. Plastics are lightweight, durable, and cost-effective. Plastics can be fabricated into most anything. Lamentably, these same properties pose a serious long-term hazard to ecosystems. It has been said that plastics, like diamonds, are forever. Plastics are the fastest growing segment of the watershed waste stream, creating serious and deadly impacts on marine creatures and food webs. The world ocean is increasingly becoming more of an artificial environment, more like a synthetic sea. Research over the past decade has provided a way to understand the increase in scientific terms. Scientific trawls in the remote Pacific in 1999 by the Aglita Marine Research Foundation revealed that drifting plastic outweighed available zooplankton or food by a factor of nearly six to one, as demonstrated by this trawl sample. But that was a decade ago. Recent trawls by Algalita, as recently as 2008, recorded an average of about 46 pounds of plastic to one of zooplankton in the same region known as the Northeast Pacific Gyre. This alarming increase, as demonstrated by this sample, choked with toxic plastic fragments. The plastic recovered in the 2008 sample has been reduced to severely degraded chips due to photo degradation and the loss of plasticizers. This makes plastic brittle allowing it to break down over time by wave action. Plastics are known to sort pollutants up to a million times their concentration in the surrounding waters, creating toxic drifters. Plastic debris at some point can be confused for food due to size, shape, and color. Since beach plastic in Hawaii are mostly blue, black, and white chips, researchers believe that much of the red and yellow degraded plastic has been confused for food and eaten by turtles, birds, and fish, thus contaminating the ocean's food chain. As we look at the samples collected over time, the lack of warm colored chips is obvious. What we see are more white, blue, green, and black severely oxidized fragments. Consuming toxic plastic is believed to create endocrine disruption that impacts gender, whereby males become more feminine and fail to produce sperm. Since more than half of plastic sinks, the seafloor becomes impacted as well. Mostly unseen, bottom debris can smother the seafloor habitats and restrict gas exchange from bottom to the water column. The problem is not restricted to post-consumer products and packaging. There are feedstock or pre-production polymers shaped like pearls. They escape factories and are carried by the watershed into rivers and eventually into the ocean. These tend to resemble eggs, complete with a yolk-like interior. Today, plastic dust is also employed in synthetic products. These dust particles also escape into the watershed and are so small that undersea creatures collect it as they move through the water column. The smaller the fragments, the fewer of them are found, indicating that filter feeders had collected them. Do zooplankton consume these tiny particles? Studies are needed to determine if synthetic dust is in fact consumed by zooplankton. If so, this polymer dust could severely impact the very foundation of the ocean's food web. Marine debris changes life in the world ocean. In Indonesia, carrier crabs have long used sea urchins for protection as they forage. 
Now, plastic cups have replaced sea urchins. Not to be outdone, it appears that sea urchins have also made the transition to plastic. Humans need to consider controlling their waste stream. Booms in rivers can help sequester trash from escaping into the sea. Then public works can remove the debris to landfills. In other countries, there are grassroots approaches to controlling marine debris. In Sulawesi, Indonesia, dive operators have a hotline where marine debris is reported, then scooped up by a catamaran called the Matabiru, which is equipped with a debris retrieval system. The plastic is removed and the natural debris returned to the sea. Concerned divers are also active in removing trash they encounter. Here we see the effects of plastic on coral reefs. Plastics can smother and kill coral. Plastic floating at or near the surface is part of a drifting ecosystem called a windrow. Here, you can make out concentrations of zooplankton, drifting jellies, and tinafores, all mixing with the marine debris and plastic chips. You can observe herring schools feeding and see how the drifting trash attracts all manner of foragers. These drift zones used to be natural, but over time have become increasingly infused with synthetics. Drifting containers like this oil can can transport marine creatures over a wide stretch of the ocean. Drifting sargassum is also home to juvenile filefish, attracting even more predators. Over the eons of millennia, foraging sea creatures have been using these windrows for nutrition. And now these debris zones contain toxic accumulations of plastic. Due to the long life of polymers in the marine environment, it is vital that humans control their litter locally, nationally, and internationally.